it is pleasure to have here today uh, Professor Tzvi Mazef from Tel Aviv University. Uh, Tzvi did his PhD with uh, Yaakov Shacham at the Hebrew University in the 70s. Then he moved to a short postdoc in um, Berkeley and then from Berkeley to Tel Aviv. And uh, his main interest is um, binary stars and uh, extra, uh, extrasolar planets. And um, this is, which is a relatively a new field in astronomy. Observational, it is, it's a new field in astronomy. And um, one of the most exciting missions in the recent years is the Kepler mission, which is a um, um, member in the science team. And the Kepler mission, which is a $1 billion telescope uh, orbiting the sun, this mission uh, was capable of revolutionizing uh, our knowledge about extrasolar planets. And this is the topics of um, Tzvi talk today. And um, let him just speak. It's, it's always a pleasure to, to come here. And uh, uh, before I start, I wish to, to share with you, as they say in America, uh, two, two feelings that I have. One is, is uh, jealous, that I'm jealous. I, I see the, the young uh, astronomers that you, the best in, in the country, that you managed to, to recruit. Uh, so I, I'm really jealous, you know, the, the, the previous generation, which is young for me, which is uh, Tal and Avishai, and now uh, Iran and Boaz, and I, I, I'm really jealous. <coughs> the, the other thing is that uh, 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 I have to share with you a, an experience that happened 40 years ago. Uh, in fact, exactly 40 years ago, uh, maybe a few months uh, difference, and this is uh, concerned with the the first paper that I wrote in astrophysics, which I had an idea with my mentor, uh, Yaakov Shacham. This is about uh, triple systems, which I plan to show the paper here, but uh, this morning I decided that there are too many slides, so I erased it. But anyway, uh, and we send it, uh, so I had a great idea about precession and triple systems. So we send it uh, to, I think, up J letters, and uh, after a few months, like it was this de de uh, those days, we got a referee report, and the referee report, it's a very interesting paper, and uh, it's not appropriate for up J letter because, uh, strangely enough, uh, just a few weeks ago, a few months ago, appeared uh, a paper in A&A, which uh, similar similar approach. Well, the Hebrew University didn't have A and A, so <laughs> uh, we checked out, and the, the only place was the Weizmann Institute. So I, I took the bus, uh, you know, trembling, <laughs> got here, and there was a problem of uh, xeroxing the the paper. It wasn't easy. Uh, the, the librarian made a big favor for me to to xerox the paper, and then I came back to Jerusalem, and it turned out it's not exactly the same. And we managed to, to convince the editor of Up J Letter that it should be, should be published as a letter. Uh, but anyway, I remember that, that uh, I, I'm sure that these, the young people here don't, uh, don't understand what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, so yeah. So it was uh, technology advanced since. Anyway, I, I would like to talk about uh, Kepler and there is uh, so many results in Kepler. Uh, some of them I, I am part of, some of not. So I decided to give kind, kind of, a, I picked up a few, a few items. And one of them is, uh, I, I will make a kind of an introduction at the beginning and then go to Kepler and focus about the circumbinary planets. And one specific uh, system which, uh, two papers are uh, in, in the pipeline about it, which I think is, is very, I think it's interesting. And, and, and um, if I will have time, I'll <laughs> cover this thing, uh, especially honoring Boaz, who is uh, also a major uh, player in, in this field. Anyway, okay, so, um, you know, uh, it's very difficult to see uh, exoplanets, they are far away, they're faint. So one, one technique is the Doppler technique. Uh, we observe the star, the star is moving because of the unseen companion, the unseen planet, and we measure the Doppler shift. So what you do, if you don't know, you, are, you, you have a sample, 
you go to the telescope, you measure the, the, the velocity as a, as a function of time, maybe this is a scatter, this is the question whether this is scatter or signal, but if you manage to fit a sine function to this, that means that uh, you detected a companion and then uh, you measure the period of the radial velocity modulation and the amplitude and from that you can derive the mass of the planet. Well, it's, it's a little bit complicated, but this is not the issue of this talk, so I wouldn't go into the details. Anyway, the first, uh, the first uh, exoplanet uh, as, as known as exoplanet was uh, 51 peg at, uh, at uh, 95, where, the, where uh, Mayor and Kelo detected the, the radial velocity modulation, and from that they derived the mass of the of the planet, which is half Jupiter mass, so that's uh, a, by no question a planet. And since then, I just want to, just a, a, a very rough overview of this, of a, this, this figure, which to me is, is amazing. This is a, a collecting the, the, all the planets that were discovered by radial velocity by this technique. And this is the year of, det of detection, and this is the mass, derived mass up to Sinai of the unseen companion. And you see 51 peg here, which was, uh, this is uh, on a log scale uh, uh, with uh, Jupiter, here is Jupiter, here is Neptune, in here, in here is Earth, and you see this uh, lower envelope, which is amazing. So the technology uh, advanced so much on, on a, on a, on a the lower envelope is a line as, as, uh, as time progresses. So meters per second, what is now the sensitivity? Yeah, right, a few meters per second. Meter. Yeah, the, for bef below that it's very difficult, not because of the, of the, rad of the spectrograph, but because of uh, no stellar noise that is coming from spots that are spots and other things that, uh, yeah, right. So, so I it is amazing that, that you d since, since 95, this, this, uh, this uh, progress. Well, I also want to call your attention that, uh, in fact, maybe it's not the first one. This is one which is very close to my heart, which uh, it's, it's a project that I initiated uh, before that, and we detected this one, which at that time was not considered as a planet, and still today I'm not sure it's planet, but anyway, it's a planet by definition is the, a planet which appears in the, in the, in the catalogs on the web, so f according to this definition, this is a, a planet, anyway. And, and, and there were even a few with the pulsar that were discovered by radio, but this, they don't count, anyway. Uh, but obviously this is only the tip of the iceberg that we see that there are many more, this is only what we can, we can, we can detect. And uh, the idea of, of uh, formation, uh, Order is, is uh, no, knows about that uh, order of magnitudes better than me. Uh, 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 there is a, a cloud, a molecular cloud that, contra that contracts, forms a star, and the star is uh, there is a leftover of material which is orbiting in a disk, and the disk is uh, gradually forming planetesimals, and then from the planetesimals. Uh, uh, the planets are formed. So at uh, this uh, very naive, I would say, picture, that means that we shouldn't be a surprise if every star has, has pla a planet or planetary systems like our, li like our sun. Uh, um, in our solar system, uh, uh, there are a few features that fit this, this uh, <coughs> very naive uh, 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 scenario is that uh, first of all the giant planets are far away, the, the nearby planets are, are uh, uh, the four inner planets are, are terrestrial, like similar to our Earth. They all are on a circular orbit, they all orbit about the same plane, and which is important and will appear in, in my talk later, they all move at the same sense of rotation, which we call a prograde motion. So the sun is rotating and all the planets are moving 
at the same sense of rotation, which is, makes sense because if this is a, a reflection of the angular momentum of the, the primordial angular momentum of, of the cloud, which uh, uh, the, the existence of angular momentum, that's that what causes the, the, the disk and the planets, mm -hmm. then, then uh, uh, we, we would expect that uh, the, 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 the planetary s uh, plane would be orthogonal to the original uh, uh, angular momentum of, of, of the cloud. That, that's a very, very good question. And I, I am spending years on this. Uh, uh, um, well, <laughs> if you have a star, it's very difficult to measure. But you can do that in an indirect way if you have a single star. Uh, but the, it's very difficult to, to, to measure the sense of rotation. Suppose the star is here, so sometimes you can measure whether the angular momentum vector of the star, the rotation and axis of the star, the stellar axis rotation is here or here or there. But if it is here or there, this is very difficult to measure, the sense of rotation. And I will show that in, in, in one specific, this is in fact the, one of the, of the key points of the talk, that in one, in one system, we were very lucky to, to measure this sense of rotation. Uh, OK, a and um, here is, here is uh, um, so, so you know the, 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 this uh, very naive uh, uh, scenario has, uh, doesn't work so well. Uh, after we discover more and more uh, uh, planets, here is, for example, a summary, which is also amazing in my eyes, <coughs> a summary of the known masses and periods of the radial velocity of the exoplanets that were measured by Doppler, by Doppler technique. And uh, this, is, this is the period uh, uh, on a log scale. And this is the mass of the planet on a, also a log scale with uh, relative to Jupiter. So this, this is Jupiter, and this is 10 Jupiters, and this is, uh, this is 0.1 Jupiter. Here is about Neptune, uh, Neptune mass. And what you see uh, immediately is uh, uh, that there are many, many giant planets with mass of Jupiter or larger, but with a very short period. In fact, 51 Peg was th the first discovered one was a giant planet, no question, because the, the mass was a half a Jupiter mass up to Sinai. And, and the period was three days. And three days, uh, because of Kepler laws, we know. So they, they are very nearby. So, 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 so we know that this uh, simple picture that all the giant planets has to be, uh, have to be far away from the star because of formation and the, the disk is too hot to form a, a, a planet. I don't want to go into, into the details, but it, it's not true. It's, it, it's not, there are many, many, many planets, giant planets like, like Jupiter that are very near their uh, parent stars, which was a big, big surprise. Before that, all the theoreticians, maybe exception of one or two, were ready to swear that this such a beast cannot exist, cannot exist. Uh, uh, so this is a big surprise. And, and another surprise is the... Sorry, but, but, uh, subjectively, you are directed towards short periods, right? When you measure. That's absolutely true. to wait 30 years, right? This is absolutely true. So that's why I, I put this, uh, this uh, iceberg picture. So I'm not claiming that all the giant planets are far away. But it, the fact that you find one of them and people swear to you that they cannot form there, this is something against the theory. No, no, you are absolutely correct about that. Right. A and in fact, there are many giant planets here that are with a, with a period of a, of a thousand days. Not a a as you said, because uh, Jupiter is 12 years, so we have to wait much longer. But we, we, we find longer. But no, th this is not the surprise. The surprise is that some of them, at least not one and not two and not three, Many, 
are giant planets, we call them hot Jupiters, which are very near the, their parent stars. No, no, th yeah, thank you for this point. Right. And the other thing, which is very surprising, very surprising, is that uh, some of the planets have huge eccentricities. This is again not going along the, 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 the primitive or the simple, simple minded uh, 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 scenario. And in fact, when we discovered the, the first one, in, that was six years before 95, it had a po a, an eccentricity of 0.4. And, and many famous uh, astronomers became famous uh, later were swearing that this is not a planet because it has a, an eccentricity of 0.4. But now we know that there are planets with uh, eccentricity of 0.9 as well. So this is something is not going along very well with the... With the, with the with the simple uh, scenario, but so people, but uh, people are very creative. So in they invented some mechanism to to explain these things. You know, this is a theory of uh, formation out of a disk, and if you cannot show any fact against it, which means that every fact that you come and find, you find an explanation for that. This is, in my eyes, not a science but religion. But, uh, and I'm saying this uh, in a negative way in this uh, context, but uh, <laughs> not, not in general. <laughs> but, uh, but so people invented the how to save the, the, the out of disk uh, formation scenario. So one, one scenario is mi migration, that the planet is formed, but because of uh, interaction with the disk, it migrates in. That's why the hot planets are, f that's why we find or Jupiter's. It didn't happen in our solar system, luckily, because if this would happen, we wouldn't, wouldn't be here. And for the eccentricity, they, they uh, suggest that they, the, planet pl the planets were formed far away, but they collided with each other and formed the uh, eccentric orbit. And from that, this eccentric orbit can also explain why some of them ended up uh, nearby. Anyway, so, so the, the I, th I feel, this is personally, that, the, that the it's, it's not, uh, uh, we are not, the last word didn't, didn't, didn't uh, we didn't reach the last point. Anyway, uh, an, another, another uh, 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 way to detect a, a planet is by the transit way. And this is, uh, suppose we have a, a, a planet with a star, so if we look from above nothing will happen but if we look from the side our line of sight is in the orbit then what happen I what would happen is that the the, the planet <laughs> will go in front of the of the stellar disk and what we get is we will get a drop in the intensity of the star of course the star is very far away so we cannot resolve it obviously but we can measure the intensity and when we, we, we find some, some drop in the intensity, then this is the indirect evidence that uh, stars, uh, uh, that uh, there is a planet that is transiting. It's called uh, transiting the, the star. Of course, for that we need very, very specific angle of, uh, of inclination. The inclination has to be 90 degrees. That means that our line of sight has to be orthogonal or almost orthogonal to the angular momentum vector of the orbital angular momentum of the system. And there is a only very low probability to, de to, to, to discover that. But some, some planets, for us, luckily enough, show this thing and, and we can detect uh, the transit. And, the f uh, and this is a not a new idea. Because as Rand said, I'm coming from binaries. So in binaries, we, we know that there are many eclipsing binaries. So here are two examples, which will be important for uh, in, the uh, um, in the other part of the, of, of the, of the talk. So this is uh, 90 degrees that we are looking f uh, with an inclination 90 degrees. So one, one uh, star is uh, completely hidden by the other star. This is that eclipse. And uh, sometimes it goes completely in front of the big star, and that, that is the other eclipse. There is primary eclipse and secondary eclipse. This is because the, the secondary doesn't emit so much light. The brightness surface of the, of the secondary is not as 
loud as the brightness surface of the primary ring. And sometimes if we are not exactly at 90 degrees, so we get something which is uh, uh, called a partial eclipse, uh, which the star barely touches the other star from our, li from our line of sight point of view. So this is not new, the idea to apply that to, to, to planets. Uh, the only difference is that the planet is very small relative to the star, so the depth is going to be very small, and there would be no, no secondary eclipse because the planet doesn't emit, almost doesn't emit light. So this is almost true, so that there would be only primary eclipse, but very, very small. So for that, you need a, a precise measurement. And of course, this, the planet has to be close to the star. Suppose we are looking from here, so this will be an eclipse when the, star, when the planet moves around the star. But if we are the same inclination, but the, the radius of the planet is larger, then we, we, that there will be no, no transit. So, so this applies only to short period uh, planet. Anyway, the first discovered was uh, HD 209458. Uh, this is a... <coughs> A group uh, that I led uh, uh, discovered by radial velocity that there is a planet, and then we, it's a long story, we told it to a PhD student that went to, to Colorado and, uh, for, for a summer job, and his advisor for the summer built a telescope in his uh, yard. This is true. And uh, before he left uh, Harvard, we said to him, well, this is, this is our uh, planet, maybe you check. You check whether it is uh, transiting, and, and he did. This is, this, is, uh, this is the first data. This is each point is a measurement of the intensity of the star. This is the uh, axis, uh, phase axis or time axis. And exactly when we predicted, there was a drop in the intensity of the star. And the, a week later, it was uh, again the... the, the the period was uh, three and a half uh, days, so uh, you have to wait a week. And th th this, these, these were the two measurements that he did. And from that, uh, the, the, the field exploded. Because he showed, uh, Charbonneau, Dave Charbonneau, was at that time was a student, uh, he showed that there are transiting planets uh, do exist. Anyway, so uh, it didn't take long before the Americans decided to send a special mission, the Kepler satellites, not a satellite, a mission, in order to search for transiting planets. It, it is amazing because the first one was only at 2000, discovered at 2000, and, and, uh, and uh, it didn't take um, less than 15 years till they send a mission in order to detect uh, planets. Uh, just to be fair, the first uh, were the French, who sent before, before it uh, a satellite that was already ready, but they changed its, uh, its goal in order to search for, also to check for planets. But uh, the, the, the Kepler mission, that was a big uh, success. It was launched <coughs> on 2009. And the idea is that they were looking at uh, about 150, 170,000 stars all the time. And the plan was to look for 3.5 days, a uh, year, sorry. <laughs> 3.5 years and maybe to extend it to seven years and look all the time exactly at the same star. So every half an hour, the satellites send back to Earth measurement of the intensity of 170,000 stars. And this accumulates uh, for four years. Uh, NASA agreed to extend the mission, but <laughs> Uh, and this is what uh, they found. This is the stars that have planets. Uh, but what happened is that uh, the second reaction wheel, which cost, I don't know, <laughs> $100 or something, failed. Uh, they had only one spare. And by, by May 11, 2013, they, they ended this mission. So we have a, a, a data for four years, about four years, every half an hour a measurement and very accurate. So this is a, a heaven for, for people who like to do a data analysis, <laughs> like me. You know, that's that's what I want, that's what I know to do. And and uh, uh, what, uh, so I want just to pick up a few uh, uh, important in my eyes uh, uh, results. One result is that Kepler discovered 
uh, many stars with multiple planets, like in our solar system. It's not a, a big surprise, but it, it was not done before that. And this is all only because there is this measurement after measurement after measurement. It is wonderful light curves. But you have to analyze all these uh, 170,000 stars, and each one of them has uh, this uh, set of uh, data. Uh, uh, so here is a kind of a, kind of a, 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 a it's not updated, but this is, this is a, a, the systems, the, all the systems that were discovered with one star and, uh, and uh, more than one planet. Uh, I have a movie, how they rotate, but uh, it will take some time. I, I, I skipped that. This is done by, by Dan Fabricki, a close friend. Anyway, but uh, uh, th th this is an, an interesting uh, uh, diagram, I think. And this is uh, what, what they did, Win, uh, Josh Wynn and, and Dan Fabricki, is they took the, the, the known multiple systems, and for each pair of planets, neighboring adjac adjacent planet, uh, uh, they took the ratio of P out over P in. And two means that, uh, that the outer planet has a period of twice the inner planet, right? And, and that means, if, if the ratio is two, it means that um, you cannot put another planet in between them, because there is a pro problem of stability. Also in our solar system, if you f follow the periods of the, of the different planets, you cannot put another planet in between except between Mars and, and, and Jupiter. And this is where the, the asteroid belt is. But so, so it's, it's compact. In, from dynamical point of view, it's compact. It means that the, the, if we think in the, in, in the terms of, of forming out of a disk, that the, the disk is forming planets as compact as possible. And you have to remember that, that we don't have the luxury, like in the solar system, we have only information to the transiting planets. Maybe m there are many more which we miss. But anyway, we, we get this, this, uh, this uh, plot, which means that most, most of them, most of the, of the known multiple or pairs of planets around the same star have a period ratio of uh, 1 to 2. And also you can, you can uh, notice that there are, these are the resonance, uh, 2 to 1, 3 to 1, 3 to 2, and, and uh, you see that they are near the resonance, there is a, a significant, significant enhancement of the number of planets, which means that planets don't like to be exactly on the resonance, but near it. Uh, and this is very interesting from from dynamical point of view. I cannot get into this. I'm just highlighting a, a few a few results of Kepler. Another another <laughs> result of Kepler is the frequency of planets. In fact, the Senate of the U.S. approved this, the mission only because NASA promised that they will come up with the frequency of Earth-like habitable planets in the galaxy. And for that you need, first of all, you need a kind of rocky planet about size, a mass size of Earth, super Earth, and in the habitable zone, which means that uh, water is not, not in vapor and not, not, uh, not in, in ice form, but only liquid. So you need the Earth to be, uh, that planet to be in a period of, uh, say, a year or around a year. And from that point of view, don't tell anybody, but the, the, the mission is, fa is a failure. Because we don't know what is the, we, we don't know what is the frequency of, of Earth-like planets in the habitable zone in, in around us. But uh, there, there are many other uh, uh, extremely nice, in interesting uh, results. So this is one of them. This is the frequency, the frequency of planets. That means that uh, how many 
per star, if you take 100 stars or 1,000 stars, how many planets do you expect to find? So including the correction, I cannot get into this. This is a very nice uh, work uh, by Petit Gura, was at that time a, a, a PhD student at Berkeley. And uh, the, the result is that, uh, you know, between, uh, this is a, as a square root of two, at each one of these beams, the frequency is about, I don't know, seven, 10, 10%. So you can expect 10% 10, 10 of your stars to have a planet at that beam. And this is only for between five and 50 days. Above that, that this is what, what you said, we don't know. Because uh, 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 above 50 days, the, the probability to have a transit is very small. It goes much faster than, than the radial velocity amplitude. The radial velocity amplitude goes like uh, 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 one over the, the p to the q, uh, to the square cube, but this is goes like a. Right, anyway, okay, a and another thing is that uh, I, I am uh, really excited about this. Uh, uh, this is what uh, what uh, it's called uh, the the Neptune. I call it the the Neptune desert or the N Neptunian desert of short period binary. So this is again the radial velocity. B I showed you such a similar plot, but now is a function of the radius, and there are many more because of the transit, because of Kepler. This is the period, and you can see that there is here a, a serious uh, a paucity. Of, of planets, and to my uh, thinking, this might indicate that the giant planets, which are here, this is now in radius of the Earth, which means one, me this is the radius of, of Jupiter, <coughs> and uh, this is the radius of the Earth. So, so the giant planets have, in my eyes, a different population, and maybe were formed by migration indeed, they were formed here in, in long period and moved to here. And there is an interesting discussion why they couldn't f move in further. And I think that the bulk of the discovery of Kepler is this population here, which is what called the super Earth, which are a little bit larger, most <laughs> of them larger than the, than the radius of the Earth. And they, and, uh, and, uh, and they go like this, which is, I think, it's, it's not an it's not a, it's not a observational bias. This is a, an observational bias here, but here it's not. So there is a, a different, I think, there is a different population. And uh, luckily, because this desert uh, can uh, help us distinguish between the, the, the giant planets here and the, and the Earth and super Earth here. OK, and, and also we can, this is just highlights, uh, we can measure, if we combine masses and radii, Kepler gives us only the radii because the depth of the transit uh, tells us the, the radius of the planet. But we can measure the, the mass. Kepler gives us only the radius, sorry. Kepler gives us only the radius. This is the radius of the planet. And we can measure the mass either by radial velocity by RV, by Doppler, or by uh, another technique, which is TTV. I don't want to go into this. So we, we constructed this, this uh, graph with all these measurements that uh, some of them we added, 10 of them. And, and you, can, you can start to speculate about the composition of the planet. Because if you have a planet which is, uh, say, only iron, like the core of the Earth, then you would expect this, this curve, as if the radius as a function of the mass. So those are not made only of iron. So if, if you think of uh, some rocks, silicate rocks, so this is only silicate rock by itself, so you, you get this, this line. So those are not. If you think like Neptune, which is uh, just ice, so you get this one. So these are not. Those are not made only of ice, because if they would be only of ice, they will, they, their radius will be here. So that means that they have huge envelope, usually a gas, usually a hydrogen above them. So, so you, we can start, you know, s not only talking about the dynamics of, of the planets, but also about the composition. 
And I ignore completely, now there is a very nice works about the, the envelope, just uh, getting into the envelope and starting to, 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 to study the, the, the chemistry of the envelope itself. Okay, anyway, so this is it. Now I want to go into the, the circumbinary planets and especially about Kepler-47. So, okay, so I remind you, there are many, many eclipsing binaries in, in the galaxy. That f they, they are eclipsing binaries from our line, from our line, from the point of our line of sight. If there would be another observer, it, it wouldn't be an eclipsing. Eclipsing is only because we are looking from a certain direction. Anyway, so, so this is not new that Kepler discovered thousands of eclipsing binaries. Here is one of them. And this is a revolution in the people who are doing eclipsing binaries. This is a revolution because before that, people went to the telescope, like Marianne is doing, you know, going to the telescope, there is clouds, there is a... Uh, uh, so you can measure some time. But here, it, you know, it's a satellite. And every half an hour, there is a measurement. So these, these are measurements of, of uh, one, one kick uh, Kepler input catalog star, and uh, it turned out to be a, a, an eclipsing binary. So this is not a big surprise, but the, the tools that we are now getting in order to study those uh, uh, eclipsing binaries is, is fantastic. So for example, this is a zoom of one eclipse, which is a, a, a dream for, for people who, who, who study the eclipsing binaries, and, and you can see it, it's fantastic. Anyway, but I'm not going to talk about this, but we were thinking in the last 30 years about finding planets around binaries. And, and, uh, and uh, I I it's amazing because, because the, the people in the movies, they thought about this and they, they, uh, they made the, the Tatooine uh, uh, movie. And in the Tatooine movie, the, 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 the hero is living on a planet with two stars, two suns. Right? So, so what will happen is something like this. The, the planet has to be far away because otherwise uh, it will be kicked off by, by the... And, and it's interesting, right? Because uh, uh, the, the rotation of the planet is the year for, for people who live on this planet. So this rotation is a year, but suppose also that the planet is moving around itself, like us. So in a day, so it's their day would be the rotational period of the planet around its axis, right? So, so a planet, a, a, an observer on that planet, what would he see? He will see in the, where is, uh, this is here, is, is east, right? He will see a, a, at the morning, he will see, what, what would he see? Two suns. You will see two suns rising. Then they go to the meridian, meridian and then uh, after a half a, uh, another half a, uh, another quarter of a day, it will be set. First one, and immediately after that, right? So the period between them is, uh, excuse my Hebrew, is bein hashmashot, of course. <laughs> so so they they were thinking about it. So so, so it's very interesting. So. So, so people were talking about this, about detecting this, uh, this possible circumbinary planets for years, and Kepler gave us the, the opportunity to do that. It's very difficult to detect those. And uh, quite a few people wrote uh, sophisticated codes to do that, and... Uh, and uh, with, with no big success alt, until Kepler. Okay, so the idea is the following. Let, you have to remember that most stars are in binaries, <coughs> as, as you all know. It's, again, excuse my Hebrew, it's a, it's a verse in, in Genesis, Lo tov ve'yot ha'kuchav levado, se lo ezer kenegdo. So the idea is that if there is a, a, this cloud that is collapsing, but uh, uh, in most cases, in most cases, uh, there is a fragmentation of the cloud and the uh, two stars are formed. So now we are talking about a short period binary and around this should be a disk that will form this uh, circumbinary planet. Maybe it's, it's not possible. Maybe if, well, our sun 
is, is a single star, yeah, to most people. Uh, some people claim that there is a companion here as well. Okay, so um, we discovered many of them. Here is a, is a partial list, it's not updated, this is, this is a, a, a partial list of all the Kepler circumbinary planets. And I want to focus on one of them, which is 40, <laughs> 40, Kepler 47. So here is 47, Kepler 47, this is the light curve of Kepler. Uh, and then uh, you can see there is an eclipse here. This is the primary eclipse, this is the secondary eclipse. This is the secondary eclipse, secondary eclipse, secondary eclipse. This is not new. So this is, this is what defines it as an eclipsing binary, right? The, this is an eclipsing binary. So if you, if you separate the transits, this is the primary eclipse, 15%, and this is the secondary eclipse, which is half a percent. But then you can see that on top of that there is a little drop, little drop of the light curve, little drop, which is a uh, 0.2 percent, and th this is a transit. This is called Kepler 47b, and these are, this is a list of all the transit that we detected. And to our surprise, there is another set of transits, only three at that time, that indicated that there is another planet in the system. So to summarize that, we published a paper in 2012. This, this is, you can see the period, the primary period, the, 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 the binary is a period of four days, the planet B is uh, 50 days, and the planet C is 300, and three, 300 days, about. Right, this is, this is a summary of that. So this was the first circumbinary planetary system with two planets. Anyway, when we publish this, we notice that there is one here, another uh, transit maybe, but that was a single event. So we didn't dare to publish it as a, another planet. In fact, there was a discussion in the team whether to call the attention to this because but that was when the satellite, the mission worked, so we opt for another data to see, uh, but we didn't know what is the period, of course. So here is that, uh, that uh, one, but after some more data arrived, so there is another one. And now we know the distance, the, dis the difference in time between them, so which is 108 days, so we went back and, s and indeed <coughs> noticed, hey, there is one here. And we went back, hey, there is another one here, and another one here. And we waited a little bit, and there is another new data, which is here. So this, this uh, closed the loop, and we are sure that there is another one with uh, 187 days. So this is uh, now, uh, this is the, 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 plan the known planets. So um, here is a simulation of the three planets. Well, you know, the Americans, they are crazy about habitable zones, so this is a calculated habitable zone. I, I'm not, this is a, what uh, Bill Welsh prepared, so I'm showing this, but anyway, this, this, uh, this is how they rotate, the, the, the three planets around the, around the binary. Okay, now, do the planets move in a prograde or retrograde <coughs> motion. You would expect if the eccentricity is zero and they go in the same inclination, the same plane, so it's, it's a quiet, from the dynamical point of view, it's a quiet system. But you wish to, to have some observational evidence of that. So we did. This is a kind of new, new result which I'm very excited about. And, and the idea is the following. Now suppose this is the binary, and this is the planet. This is just a schematic uh, plot. So there is a, an eclipse, a transit here. <coughs> so you would, you, you understand that because at the eclipse the planet is moving this way, and the primary is moving this way, so the relative 
velocity of them is very high. And that means the duration of the transit would be small. This is in a prograde motion. But here, when the planet, it, this is a retrograde motion because the planet is moving this way, but the, pl uh, the binary is moving this way and the planet is moving this way. So at a transit, they are moving in the same direction. So the relative velocity would be small and therefore the duration of the transit will be high. So we can measure, and it's, as far as I know, only in, 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 uh, in circumbinary planet, we can measure the duration and ask ourselves whether this fits with prograde or retrograde motion. And this, this is new, very, very hot from, from what we, we do. So this is a, a what we expect. This, this is the phase, the binary phase. Zero is the, is the primary eclipse. And we folded uh, all the tr measured transits with their duration as a function of the binary phase. And this, this is what we expect for a prograde. And this what is what we expect from a retrograde. So obviously, obviously, this is, this is a, it, it obviously moves in a, in, a, in a prograde motion. So the same sense of rotation. The same sense of rotation, the binary and a, a, the planet. Now, there is another, another a, a piece of evidence, which I could not explain here because it would take uh, 10 minutes also that we developed in Tel Aviv, that we can measure even the sense of rotation of the star relative to the planet. And it's again a prograde motion. This is following this, the spots in, in, a, in, a, in a way uh, which I, you have to believe me, this and, and this is published. Uh, uh, uh. A and, and, and you see that uh, relative to, the, to that, uh, uh, the, di the two different uh, uh, curves here is because this is the uh, impact parameter of the transit. Because impact parameter of zero means that the transit goes through the center of the stellar disk. And, and uh, B equals half, which means that the, that the chord of the transit is not going through the center of the disk, but uh, halfway between the center and the edge of the stellar disk. So, so if you plot the residuals of the duration measurement during this e four years, and, and you measure the residuals relative to the B equals zero, which is the longest possible uh, duration, you get this very nice curve, which means which means there is a precession. There is a precession. That the orbit of the planet is changing a little bit. And it goes from zero and goes down to, to during the four years, to, to some, some value, which, which is, I, I think, very nice. And in fact, we managed to do that for the other two planets. Uh, so that means that is prograde. And we did it for the, for the 47. There, are, there aren't many measurements, but they are, they are clearly uh, 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 fitting with, with, a, with a very uh, large impact parameter of 0.9. And uh, it's probably go going up. I'm sorry. And, and, and it's again a program. So to summarize, uh, Kepler 47 uh, is, is a quiet, from dynamical point of view, it's a quiet system. A, a circular three systems, quite compact, and also move in a prograde motion. So it it's very uh, reminds me at least the solar system. So this this is this is very new that a, 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 a planetary system like our solar sun, like our sun, like our planetary system here, can be formed around a binary. The binary is, 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 uh, is very different, is, is extremely different. The f the, it, it, it can be formed outside the binary, which, which is, 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 a, is a, I think, a very nice result. Anyway, I think I will skip the last, uh, the last um, uh, point, which I did for, 
for Boaz, but I will, I'll skip all that. Uh, maybe I will say one thing. If, if you look upon the 10 measurements, the 10 systems, here are less than 10, you, you notice that the, 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 for all of them, the orbital period of the binary is relatively long for all of them, not for only for Kepler-47. And, and here uh, I plotted uh, uh, the histogram of the period of the known eclipsing binaries in Kepler and the uh, uh, orbital period of the binaries that, ha that have known circumbinary planets. And it turns out to be only uh, relatively long. So this is a mystery. Why short period binaries don't have or we did not discover around them a uh, planets. So we have a complicated uh, argument why it is. I, I'll just tell you what it is. I won't show you the detail. I will skip all that. But the, the idea is that all these short period binaries were formed by a third star stellar companion. A, binary, a, a, a cloud does not know how to form short period binaries. This is the claim. And it needs another star a distant companion to absorb all the angular momentum in order to shrink the binary. So all those have, this is the claim, this, this was claimed before Kepler. Uh, all of them have a third companion that helps the binary to shrink into those things. Bi binaries by themselves, if there is no third companion, uh, they can can, uh, can be formed only with a period of 10 days or, or, or longer. And that, plan, that star, the third star, prevents the formation of a planet around it. There is not enough, dynamically, there is no, not enough place for a planet. That's why we don't find here a, a planet. So, so it's, a, it's a kind of a complete surprise that the circumbinary planets will tell us a hint, I would say at least, that, that uh, the how short period binaries were formed or support an idea that put forward uh, much before Kepler. Anyway, I'll skip all that and get to the, uh, right. Okay, so uh, uh, just future, uh, or maybe I'll go to the summarize. So, so Kepler made a revolution of the study of exoplanets. I think there is a strong evidence for, for two population giant planets and super-Earths, and they, the, f the fact that they are formed differently is reflected by the desert, by, by the short period Neptunian uh, desert. And uh, we are finding circumbinary planets, and we are finding one specific circumbinary planet. I'm sorry, this is only one, but that's all we have, which behaves very uh, similar to the, our solar system. The planets are inclined with zero, incli almost zero in, uh, inclination, otherwise we would see them trans transiting. They are very low eccentricities and they move in a prograde uh, motion. And uh, in the future, of course, uh, there are, I think because of the success of Kepler, there are three space missions planned, some of them next year. Uh, TESS will be uh, something similar to Kepler, but different. Uh, Keops is uh, quite different. Uh, Keops will, it's not a survey, but it's, uh, it will uh, target uh, specific uh, stars. And uh, the revolution would be uh, PLATO, which uh, this is a European mission, this is American, and this is Swiss. And uh, PLATO will uh, revolutionize again the field because this is a big, big mission that will yield many, many uh, planets, including what we want to get at the end to find uh, um, Earth-like planets in the habitable zone. And uh, all this, uh, especially this one, uh, will need a lot of ground-based follow-up measurement. And this will be uh, one of the, of the key, I, I hope. The key players in follow-up from the ground is LCOGT, which is a, a consortium of telescopes run at, at, at Santa Barbara. And Israel just joined 
LCOGT, so we have uh, time on, 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 on this uh, set of telescopes. It's in fact, it's eight telescopes and uh, five, uh, five uh, spectrograph. One of them will be installed in Israel in the WISE Observatory. So I think this will be a way to join the, the game, another way to join the game. Thank you. D. High impact, uh, right. Around 0.9 yeah, right. What can you conclude about the mutual inclination? Yeah, we have that. It's uh, one degree. It's around the one degree. Oh, yeah, less one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We, we calculate that. Yes. Definitely, yes. There is a nearby star, I think, Alpha Centauri. Right. Which is double and had a third. Exactly, exactly. Does this fit into your picture? Yes, well. <laughs> I, I'll tell you, this is a long story. First of all, I am from the party that claims that similar to a, each star has a companion, I claim that every binary has a third distant companion. Not every, but you know, 80%, 40%, 70%. It's not rare. The triple systems, the triple stellar systems are not rare. This is, I claim this f since the 80s uh, and published a paper on this. Uh, and, and one of the arguments is, here is the first, uh, the closest star, and it is a triple system. It, but there, the, the alpha, sen, A, and B are, I forget, this is an eclipsing binary? No, it's only spectroscopic binary. What is the period? I forget. The, the, the C, yeah, right. Rani will find it in a minute. <laughs> you know, I, I have, I have uh, some, some uh, famous, uh, famous, uh, Theorems, like you know, one, the, one of my theorems is that every three points you can draw a line. <laughs> if the line is uh, wide enough, <laughs> and if not, go to log log something. <laughs> so another, another famous theorem of mine is that Iran knows everything. <laughs> Iran, Iran knows everything. And if he doesn't know, he will check and in a minute he will know. <laughs> so uh, so I, 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 I don't remember. Yeah. I'm guessing what you, what you want to ask. And I have a slide for this, but uh, not here. I will have to go out and. Uh, Oi. Maybe I will. Eight years. Eight years is the, eight years is the is close. A, B, A, B. Right, yeah. The outer is, is just a. a, a Right, is 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 uh, just oh, move together, yeah. right? Yeah. Wow, I had so many slides. <laughs> okay. So uh, you have a this is a histogram, right? This one is a collapsed histogram. Where is the epidemic? Oh, the desert is only for short period. Here, yes, of course. Okay, but, but even if, but if, if, if you will cut it here, yes. you will see a, a cl very clear histogram. So this, by eye, this is not clear because the yellow symbols are something else, like the round bases. Okay, so I knew, I knew that, I knew, I knew that you are going to ask. <laughs> so I, I have to explain. I didn't see evidence when I looked at Kepler. Okay, okay. So the story is the following. Uh, the it's a little bit confusing, and I have, I have a slide to answer this question. But uh, 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 this is what I think happens here. The, 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 the yellow points are coming from ground-based searches. Ground search bases have surveyed not 150,000 stars, but millions of stars on one hand. On the other hand, they are not sensitive to those 
because their precision is not that high. So if I will remove those, you will see the detection of Kepler, and you still will see that there is here a, a big enhance, enhancement. Yes, I have this only for Kepler. So this is a, this is a combination of two, of two surveys. Each one of them has its own limitation. One is Kepler, which has a, a relatively small sample, only 150,000 stars, and, f and but they are, they are, uh, uh, they are sensitive to, to much lower radius. But you would agree that this, that, that they, it seems like there is a stripe here, and here it ends. Why, why Kepler didn't find so many here like they found here? You have to remember that when you go, where, 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 Wait a minute, when, when you go up, it's much easier to, to detect for Kepler themselves. So there is a kind of upper limit to this stripe, which is real. Now, in order, in order to see better these, these are here, they are much sparse than those. And in order to see the difference between this and this, you need 150,000 is not enough. So for that, you need... The, the, the 50 millions of the ground space. But I have, I have uh, not here, I, but I have uh, this, and I can show you the, what you see with Kepler. You see what I'm claiming, that they, it's sparse, but still this here is, is, is pronounced. And I show you the, also the M versus P, and you can see that there as well. There, there, there is no problem. And, and you can see that. Mm. Wow, so many slides I had. Come the bit. Right. So, so, so here, you see, those that were discovered by radial velocity, it would be much easier to, f to detect those here, because you, you go from period of, by a factor of uh, 10 or more, so the, the amplitude goes up by a factor of two or three. But they didn't. It's true that it's difficult to move from here to here, but that's not the right argument. The right argument is to compare those to those. And those you have here, uh, not, not many, but you have. Why didn't people discover those here? From move to here to here, it's a factor of three or more in the amplitude, of the radial velocity amplitude. They didn't find them. So, so on one hand, I'm, I'm happy that it was not very clear, because otherwise other people would publish it before. <laughs> and in fact, uh, uh, Zabo and Kiss called it even the, the Neptune desert. But now we came back, and, and I, I think it's, it's very strong. It, when, when you do the, the analysis carefully. Last question. Yeah. My question about uh, dynamical stability. Yes. So Planets should uh, be distributed in, in a probably different way than in. Uh, okay, so so uh, I, I had a plot for this, <laughs> and in our paper we have a, a plot about this. That in all ten systems that we have, the planet does not get close enough to the binary, and it avoids the instability zone. The instability instability zone in which a binary will disturb the orbit of the planet and will not let it stay like this, uh, all the circumbinary planets avoid this instability zone. And in fact, in most cases, they are next to the edge of the instability zone.